me to meet with Adita Seidel. Um, she couldn't be here tonight, but I want to tell you a little bit about her. Adita was born in Germany, and she came of age under the Third Reich. Um, she lived through World War II in Germany, um, and in her late teens, she came to the United States. She is the child of artists, and that's something that's very clear in her being. Um, her mother was a violinist, and her father was a painter. Um, and she herself is an accomplished artist, which you'll see if you visit the table over here. Um, she's a painter and a seamstress, um, and has also painted her own golden shoes that she wears quite frequently. Um, I wanted to mention that tonight is the second night of Passover, which is a holiday that acknowledges um, statelessness. And I want to mention that because I think that would be um, significant to Adita. She um, really, I think, considers herself a witness um, to World War II. And not just in the sense that she was in Germany at the time, but it's really, really important to her that people know um, what she saw. And the first time that I met with her, I didn't mention that I was Jewish. Um, I am Jewish. <laughs> because I thought it, I don't know, I thought it might be upsetting. Um, and then the second time that we met together, I did. And it was just a really beautiful um, moment. And we sang together, and I can report that she has a really beautiful voice. Adita with two yellow birds. She's an artist, and right now, she's only doing birds. Planned or improvised, I ask. It depends on what kind of feeling you're in. Her father's paintings were the most gorgeous, big, beautiful white to other waves. Gorgeous, gorgeous, with beautiful. They used that gorgeous, big, beautiful water during the summer. A dead face once with a body in the river which cuts Bremen in two. He had no tags, so she could not tell anyone who this man was. When I ask, what does it mean that you had survived Hitler's youth? She laughs. Her weightless laugh, nearly silent, deep and weightless at the same time. From across the street, a man is throwing cherries, bombarding a violinist in a black dress. This is her mother and her father wanting the woman to look down from the balcony, to look across the street, to see the arc of a blood red fruit connecting them across the dusk. Later, if the children interrupted her practicing, Mati would come after them with a stick. At that time, there was no soap to be had. Mati, can I have one more piece of bread? No. The people were in a big garden, and they were told to go lay down. I saw the people laying. I saw them laying on the ground. I even thought afterwards, maybe whoever makes Whoever writes it down, I said, you write it down. Whatever happened, they were beautiful people. I have been in their house and loved them. I saw the people laying on the ground. I said, you write it For five marks, her job was, in the morning, in the dress shop, take the rats, put them on a plate, and take them across to a beautiful park bury them at the beginning of the park, sweep the sidewalk. She had a seat where she could look out the window and sew by the light. It took a long time to be there, and she was very happy making. I can see the garment in her lap as she makes stitches in the air with her right hand to show me how carefully it had to be done. She is a person who sings, She's had on for quite some time a pair of plain shoes painted gold. She is a person whose children have died, who has twice carried sons in her belly who weren't being fed. And after the war, little brother died, bitten by her father's dog, and there was nothing to repair it. She is a person who sings, Shalom, Shalom. 
In her stack of drawings, I see little yellow birds. I see shapes like fire and rock. I tell her I'm Jewish, and she pulls all of herself into her eyes and looks at me with that. When I tell her I write poetry, she says, that makes sense to a very red part of me. That is yellow birds made by the Lord with blue shadows underneath. That is from inside.